What's up guys? Welcome back to Corey's Garage, home of the Franken 7 project car brought to you by Reese Motorsports. Um, I want to start this video off by just saying uh, thank you to our fallen service members, our men and women of the U.S. military who have fought and given their lives and sacrificed more than the regular person would ever consider. Um, there's usually a lot of confusion every year about the difference between Memorial Day and Veterans Day. So uh, to recognize this as Memorial Day, we remember and memorialize those who have fallen, given their lives for our freedom. So thank you uh, to those who have fallen and who've given so much. Um, so today uh, was uh, a decent day as far as getting stuff done. Had another um, start the day off with some parts runs. Um, I did not realize right off the bat that it was Memorial Day Monday, so I went out to a speed shop um, not too far away, like 25 minutes away, um, to get some AN fittings to hopefully finish up my fuel system, and they were closed. So uh, I went ahead and just ordered exactly what I needed uh, online. I found it, I had it in my cart just kind of waiting. I wanted to buy local, um, but they weren't there today, so I just went ahead and just got it coming because I'm still waiting on other stuff. So. If it all shows up at once, great. I'll just deal with it as it comes. Um, otherwise, I still have a few little things here I can keep wrenching away on. Pun intended. So, um, yeah, but it was a good day. Uh, the in-laws came over again, had some dinner with us. Um, they just kind of let me do my thing in the garage, though. So, that was good. My, my father-in-law popped in a couple of times to supervise. And I gave my mother-in-law a breakdown of what a flywheel is, a water pump, a crank pulley, an alternator and what a transmission looks like so that was fun so they're uh, they're big supporters of the channel so far and they watch every day so thank you guys I appreciate that a lot um, so today uh, once I got back with the uh, if you remember from the last video and sorry I didn't make a video yesterday I was struggling with this crank pulley I did make a Facebook post but I was struggling with this crank pulley kind of misunderstood how far back or how far on it's supposed to go I thought I had to hammer the snot out of it and turns out it was already bottomed out but I wouldn't know until I got back today and heated it up for a good 10 minutes solid till it was smoking almost hot and uh, or almost red hot and it slid right on no problem so to everyone on the uh, LS tech group and LSX swap solutions on Facebook thank you for the help I appreciate that a lot that did the trick so that's one thing I'm finding out so far in every Facebook automotive group, you are going to have the snobby whatever people that just want to be a smart aleck because their project is still on jack stands for the last 16 years and they hate their life. That's their problem. I'm sorry. I feel for you. Um, this has been on jack stands for almost four years, but bless God, this is the year that it gets done. I said that at the very first of the year. There was actually a little cartoon picture floating around on the Facebook, on the RX-7 uh, Facebook pages of a little cartoon RX-7 on jack stands. It was an S4 like mine and uh, I said, you know, this is my year and it had like 2017 crossed out, 2018, 2019 and then 2020 was the only one that wasn't crossed out and so I kind of claimed that like this is the year we get it done and so far so good. So anyways, so we got the uh, we got the crank pulley on. I got the correct um, welding wire from Harbor Freight. I had to go to two Harbor Freights to find it because the one close by uh, had everything but the correct one. So I had to go an additional 30 minutes away to get just a roll. Um, they did have one of those crank pulley um, like threaded rod kits but it wasn't the correct size so I just opened it and barely slid it in there just to see. Um, you would never tell that it was open so hopefully they'll they'll take it back. Uh, I don't need it. It was only 20 bucks, but I don't have anything else that it would fit anyway, so there's no need to have it. Um, so anyway, so I made it back with the welding wire and, yeah, heated up the crank pulley for probably a good 10 minutes, and it slid right on, no problem. So um, let it cool off a little bit, uh, just reused the old boat, bolt, uh, covered it in red Loctite, sent it home. Um, my torque wrench, my half inch torque wrench here at home only goes to 150 I think the spec is 240 so I maxed it out with my torque wrench and then had a breaker bar with about a two foot pipe on it and just gave it another little skosh so hopefully that's good enough 
Um, I've heard people doing less and I've heard some people uh, replace the bolt every time and yada yada. You know, from a mechanical standpoint, and I am a mechanic, have been for many years, um, you know, what's the age-old motto? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So if the bolt's not stretched and it's in good condition and the threads are still nice and sharp and it goes in with no problem, why not use it? And, you know, torque it to spec and use it. So that's what I did. So anyways, um, so I got the front seal replaced, uh, got the crank pulley on, then moved to the back side, um, did the rear seal. I wire wheeled the, uh, the inside of where the new pilot bearings going or went rather. Uh, and then Ziz wheeled the mating surface for the flywheel. Um, so yeah, so we put the rear seal in both seals went in fine. No problem. Um, I don't know why I had that worked up in my head. I think like three jobs ago, um, when we used to do a lot of seals and, uh, I put a lot in crooked and it was always just like, it just gave me such anxiety to change a seal for some reason. And I never had it a problem before and I never had a problem with it afterwards. Just for some reason, when I worked at this place, it's like they would breathe down my neck. They're like, Oh, we got cam seals. Can you handle it, Corey? Or, Oh, we got a crank seal. Can you handle it, Corey? And it just gave me anxiety. It's ridiculous. But anyways, these went in fine. No problems at all. Um, I got a little tube of, uh, it's called Super Lube. I found it at, at uh, Harbor Freight. It's just, uh, I'll show you. You can look at my engine while I walk over here. I didn't want to have to purchase a whole big red or a big jar of the, uh, of like the red all-purpose grease. So I found this. It's called Super Lube and it's basically good for, uh, it says heavy duty dielectric food grease. Oh, it's dielectric grease. Oh, okay. Well, either way, I coated all my seals in uh, rubber o rings and things like that today and super lube. So, super duper lube. Hopefully, it, I don't see why it would cause any issues. It was just to seal things. So, but anyways, yeah, the, uh, the seals went in fine. Um, I made sure to, to note how far flush the old ones were uh, before they came out and matched it up best I could, you know, pushed it in just with my thumbs going around and then uh, took a half inch, um, like six inch or uh, three inch extension and just kind of tapped it around with the smallest little hammer I had, excuse me, and went in fine. No scoring on the crank side or the journal side on either one. So I was pretty happy with that. Uh, I got a little sill puller from Harbor Freight and it worked pretty good. So, um, Let's see, what do we do next? Okay, so we did the rear seal. Uh, then I uh, cleaned out the bore, if you will, in the back of the crank for the uh, custom pilot bearing that comes with the G-Force Z32 adapter kit. Got that installed, lubed that up inside and outside, lubed that up, tapped that in with a socket that was the same size. I believe it was a 27 mil socket, half inch, and it doubled as a uh, pilot bearing driver. So that worked out really nice. Um, then we put the flywheel on. Sprayed both sides really good with brake cleaner. Um, I went ahead and got the um, the appropriate uh, flywheel bolts and clutch bolts from G-Force. Just I wanted the complete kit. I didn't want to have to piece anything together. I wanted brand new, perfect hardware. So the flywheel bolts already had the red Loctite on them. The uh, the clutch bolts. Be aware if anyone gets that kit going forward. Um, it is a eight millimeter 12 point socket for those clutch bolts. So I did not have that. I might have one at work, but I don't think so. But anyways, I did not have that. So I had to go to two auto parts stores. AutoZone did not have it. They usually have a nice big tool selection out there. Um, O'Reilly's did. And I was very surprised because I've been to O'Reilly's a lot lately and I've been getting a lot of those blank stairs, those you're making model, automatic or manual. I've been getting a lot of those. So Anyways, I was very shocked and in awe to find an 8mm 3H drive 12 point socket for these clutch bolts. So, anyways, got back, um, yeah, cleaned the flywheel, um, installed the clutch, everything got um, Loctite, torque to spec, looked up all the specs online. I did the flywheel bolts according to the instructions online, where you do the flywheel bolts to GM specs and you do the clutch pressure plate bolts to Nissan specs. So that's exactly what I did, plus Loctite. So should have no problems with that. Um, let's see. Yeah, so clutch was on. Um, 
I did pull out the throw out bearing out of the transmission. It's okay. It seems a little, not sticky. Um, it rolls fine, but they send you a new one in the kit. So I just have to go somewhere tomorrow and have that pressed. Um, and then I can put those back on. Um, I ordered the, uh, what was it called? I always forget the name of it. It's like shifter striker rod or something. It's the, there's this piece on the back of the Z32 transmission that's like a dog bone and it has a hole here and a hole here and a little teeny universal joint goes here and connects to the rest of the shift lever. So, um, no one carries that. No one carries the universal joint, which is really all I needed because I got my, uh, LOJ, um, uh, shifter adapter kit basically to, to bring the shifter closer to the transmission for its for 240 SX's but I did see a one RX-7 guy do it and it works really well so that's why I went ahead and get it got it good um so uh so yeah but it, it doesn't have that that universal joint which is the missing piece it's always something stupid so I even went yesterday and I took the time to I measured the bores and I measured how long it needed to be and it's the same on both sides and I went to the the four big auto parts stores so i did our uh autozone advanced o'reilly's and uh, i even went to a napa in illinois because the one here was closed so i went to a napa in illinois and i had my measurements i had everything uh even flipped through the book and nothing was available that small so i tried i really did so i had to spend 70 dollars on this striker rod shifter rod doohickey mabobber Someone sent me a link to it on the Z32 pages, so I appreciate that very much. Um, so hopefully that'll be here this week, but I think I will go ahead and put the trans back in. Um, I should be able to work around that, because I want to get the trans back in so I can go ahead and measure for the uh, for the drive shaft and order that. And I don't know how long that's going to take, and I don't know where here, local in the Highland area, where to get that, but... I'm sure I can find something on Google or the car pages around here. Someone will know. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a driveline place in Highland. But anyways, I'll find something. But um, let's see. Oh, so then I came back to the front of the engine. I went ahead and put the... Uh, and I will show you. I wish I could flip the camera around while it's recording, but I can't. So I'll show you the best I can. So anyways, went ahead and put the, uh, the water pump on. I painted that. <laughs> Back at our old house in Winona Lake, uh, about the same time I painted my valve covers. I wasn't trying to go too hot boy. I just thought I wanted to try this color out and do it tastefully enough. Like, I didn't do the alternator. I thought about it, but I did not do the alternator. I didn't do the thermostat housing. But I did do the water pump, and I did the valve covers, and I think that's all I'll do. I just wanted to give it just a little something, something to make it look a little nicer when you pop the hood. Um, but, yeah, the... Uh, Crank pulley's new. That's LS1 Camaro. That's off eBay. I think that was $64. Um, alternator was like $74. Brand new LS1 uh, Camaro. The um, water pump, I don't remember. It wasn't very much. Maybe $40 bucks or so. Um, but it did not come with a thermostat housing. So I did have to order that separate. I think that was $20. Thermostat's already in it. Little O-ring gasket. No big deal. Super lube it. Um, and that's good to go. And I forgot where I found this, but I thought that was a really good idea because I was going to try to bypass it anyways. But these are two different sizes. I want to say this one is 5 8 and this one is like 3 8 or something. But they're two different sizes, um, inlet and outlet. And so someone was smart enough to create a hose that has the two different sizes. So you just put clamps on there. I'm going to replace that one. That's a very chintzy little clamp, but that's all I had. I thought I had two of these, but I don't. So that was all I have is this little dinky light duty clamp. So I will be replacing that. No worries. Um, so yeah, so the first little bit was to um, ICT, who's the same people that bring us our DOD delete plate slash valley cover. Um, they also make these alternator brackets to bring the alternator down to a lower point uh, in such cases as you delete power steering like I did. So um just the bracket is like seventy dollars which that's fine it's a nice piece i'm sure but i just so happen to have these little spacers left over from my days at Fortech in atlanta georgia where i worked on jeeps and i think that was a 
insert for a shock bushing or something. Anyways, I had a handful of them in the bottom of my toolbox, so I took one out and held it up there, just played around with some bolt sizes, and it was not far off. It was not far off at all. So I actually ended up uh, trimming, I think, an eighth of an inch off each one and pretty much held a ruler from the flat part of the crank pulley to the flat part of the alternator pulley, and it was dead even across. So that tells me that's lined up. So that was a fun little trick. So did not have to spend seventy dollars on a bracket. I spent free ninety nine, and uh, it lines up perfect. And I think it looks really clean. And I'm pretty impressed with it myself, if I do say so myself. The next fun little project, and this wouldn't have been that expensive, but so this is the factory truck tensioner pulley. And I don't know if you can see, but I had to cut a little bit of it, so it did go to about where this blue ends. That's how long the tensioner was so the pulley was actually going to be more like get my head out of the way more like out to here where my thumb is wiggling which put it way past the water pump pulley and crank pulley so again I just kind of rough measured just picked it up and set it on top and moved it back there and was like wow if I were to cut it off even with uh, this line or this line that would pretty much set me perfect. So I just kind of roughed it, uh, just eyeballed it, cut it, grinded it as flat as I could, uh, put it on there. It was pretty close. You can see I did add a couple little washers just playing around with it, but I think it's pretty well perfect now. So I need to get a little bit longer bolts. There's only about threads to about right there. This is threaded right here. This is part of the water pump assembly. So I do need to get a little bit longer bolts to see what I can find in my bolts bin. I'm sure I can find something. But yeah, so another free 99 little trick. And some of the kits you see, like that one from ICT, it comes so that bracket sticks out about right here and you have one more additional pulley. I don't know if that's necessary or not. Um, I don't know which way the water pump is supposed to turn. Because the way I was thinking about routing all this was going to look something like, you know, come from the crank, go up to the tensioner, come around, go underneath the water pump, and then come down to the alternator, wrap under, and then wrap under the crank pulley, and, you know, just kinda simple like that. Simple is, is key in this uh, Franken-7 building game. Sorry, I'm just trying to get this phone set up. So, anyways, um, that's what we got done today, and I'm pretty happy with it. The only thing I forgot was right underneath here, underneath the water pump. Um, I forgot to stick that little bad boy in. I believe that is the uh, cam position sensor. It's three wires, a little magneto type deal. So I will have to pull the water pump back off and stick that in, but that's no big deal. And then this actually is part of it too. It's like wiring a uh, little... Actually, that probably is the wire to it right there. Nah. Huh. Anyways. So, those two little, little jiggers are going to have to go back on there, but that's no big deal. Um, so, yeah, that's where we're at today. Um, so, today was national holiday. I uh, mentioned that at the first of the video. So, um, there was no mail, no deliveries, at least not that I saw. So, hopefully tomorrow we got some stuff coming. Um, I'm still waiting on my... Um, max speed and rod coilovers. Um, I'm still waiting on the brakes. I just ordered from uh, Matthew Montgomery out in Utah, out west. Um, we're waiting on the bushings from JJLR, which is the rear solid bushing setup that is everything I need. Um, and just a few little odds and ends from eBay. Like I ordered, uh, I ordered a set of black lug nuts just. They were 20 bucks. Um, the same black lug nuts at Advanced Auto Parts were 40 bucks. So I was pretty happy with that. Um, the little switch panel with the start button and a couple of toggle switches is coming. Um, let's see. Coils, spark plug wires, spark plug wire like little heat boot things. Um, the intake manifold, still waiting on that. The fittings I just ordered. 
And then I thought there was a couple other little things, but there's not much left. And the parts boxes around here are disappearing, which is great. Our recycling is overflowing. Um, but like the toolbox is clearing off a little bit down here in this little work area that I've kind of shoveled out is, uh, is clearing up a little bit. So before long, it's, I mean, once I can, I'll put the transmission back together after I get that thing pressed. Um, and, uh, yeah, and we'll get the engine back in. I might have to retap the threaded parts of those engine mounts. Um, cause when it was in there, one of the bolts was like, you would tighten it up and it would get almost to the end and then it would pop a couple of threads. So worst come to worst, if I have to air hammer that out and put a, put a bolt in through the top and tighten it with a nut on the bottom, that's what I'll do. I would probably feel better about that anyways, just with engine vibration and that rattling loose at some point. Of course, I would put, you know, Loctite and a lock washer or whatever on it, but still just to be safe. Um, so, yeah, so we're getting there. Um, the harness is in that box up on top of the hood. Um, oh, I got new hardware for the quick release steering wheel and all that. So um, I might do that tonight. We'll see. I need to get to bed early. I've. After every one of these videos, I basically don't get in bed till 2, and the last couple of nights I got it with my son, or the last couple of mornings I got it with my son, which was uh, like 6 and 7, so my sleep has been very much neglected. So tonight I'm going to try to help make up for that, and I've already took some melatonin, so I will upload this and do a little Facebook update, and I'll be hitting the sack here early tonight. So this is an actual 525... Um, dated video and uploaded so thank you guys again so much for watching um feel free to share this um to like comment subscribe um you can hit the bell you get my notifications probably every night at about three four in the morning and uh just appreciate your support i'm excited about this build um if you haven't seen uh any of the beginning videos i started this series uh, i think the end of 2018 I think like October November of 2018 so um, it goes back and you'll see I was very nervous when I made that first video but I mean now you're just hanging out in my garage and hanging out with me and I'm telling you about my car and that was the whole purpose of the channel the whole time was to just feel like you're sitting here I'm sitting here sometimes we're having a beer sometimes we're having green tea and just hanging out talking about the car and what's going on and I try to get a little technical and explain things but I don't have the camera work or the time or the patience to film edit do all that stuff uh, to do traditional how-to videos it's just kind of more like I do something I show you I do something I show you I run into an issue I show you so that just kind of keeps it in my opinion realistic at least to the fellow car people I mean if you're if you're looking for LS swap RX7 videos and this pop up pops up, hopefully most of what I'm talking about will make sense to you. Hopefully it'll be a shining light for some of you because on the like no rotors, for instance, on Facebook, most of the time, at least once or twice a week, you get a post of Hey guys, got my first RX7 or taking on my first LS swap. What transmission can I bolt on to this? And anyone that has looked for more than 30 seconds will see uh, most of the time the automatic answer is T56 if you want a manual. T56. Um, there's also options for T5. I cover that in my earlier videos because that is the route I was originally going. My first transmission I bought, and actually the first thing I bought towards the LS swap for this car, was the NV3500 um, like Silverado Cheyenne work truck five speed where the shifter was literally in the middle of the transmission so you had your bell housing your tail shaft and in the middle was the shifter which would have put it like at the firewall on the rx7 which would not have worked it was supposedly a strong transmission but the gearing was all wrong for a sports car so i sold that um pardon my text alert if you heard that that's my brother um Let's see, that threw me off. Oh, so then the next transmission I got was a uh, V6 F body Camaro T5. And because I had done some research and there were some years of T5s that um, you could basically put a big block Chevy bell housing on and put an LS7 clutch and flywheel and slave and all that and have a 
decent little transmission, but apparently they weren't very strong. Most people say after the 300 mark, your that transmission is garbage. So the one I had, I thought it was in good shape coming from a V6. Um, so there was a company I got an adapter plate from because the the way the transmission sit from the Camaro was a little bit like so the shifter was like eh. anyways um so they had an adapter kit for that but anyways long story short uh i cracked uh, a mounting ear off that case found a guy who does ford transmissions uh brought it to him to and got a new ford t5 case and brought it to him <laughs> to got another text message alert sorry about that um got another text message alert <laughs> see this throws me off uh, anyways, uh, the third gear was shot, some bearings were shot, basically it needed a full re rebuild, and that would have been way out of my budget at the time, uh, still be out of my budget, so, um, yeah, basically I told him to just, uh, you know, keep what parts he could, you know, keep the case, if he just send me the money that I gave him as a deposit, you know, we just let bygones be bygones, it wasn't his fault, it just... You buy something off Craigslist or, or Facebook Marketplace, you don't know what you're going to get. So, um, anyway, so then after some time and looking around, trying to figure out options, I even talked about selling the car, even put the car up for sale several times, nothing ever happened. And then uh, someone came forward with G-Force and told me about uh, the adapter kit for G-Force. Or I might have stumbled upon it myself. Anyways, I, I found G-Force and... They do the Z32 LS to uh, Z32 transmission adapter kit. So it's a plate you bolt to the top where you would bolt the regular Chevy transmission. And so you have two bolt patterns. Essentially, you have you bolt it to the block Chevy pattern. And then below it, you have the Nissan pattern. Um, you still have to use a Nissan starter, which I've talked about that in the last couple of videos. I had to work around some header issues with that. Um, but so far, it's really nice. It comes with all the hardware. There were some people asking about hardware on there. Um, it comes with all the hardware. Uh, the instructions are a little vague, but if you know what you're doing, you can figure out what goes where. The the um, short bolts go from the plate to the block. The long bolts go from the bell housing of the Nissan Trans to the adapter. And your clutch and flywheel is pretty straightforward if you are have done a clutch and flywheel job before. Um, then uh, as far as me, hence the name Franken7, uh, I'm having to mix and match a lot of stuff. So it's one of those things where, you know, you have someone talk about, oh, I did an LS swap for two grand. Like, don't know what you did. Don't know what corners you cut. Uh, that is not the case for me. I've tried to get things as inexpensive as I can, but I still need them to be decent quality. Um Hence why, you know, this rear subframe, for instance, I've gone and replaced all the bushings because one side of it, all the bolts were just rusted up. They would not move. But guarantee you, had I given it a hard launch or two, those bolts would have snapped and that could have been catastrophic. So I'm glad I took the time to take all that stuff out. I'm glad I'm taking the time to replace all the brakes, all the brake lines, all the um, rotors, pads, um, I'm glad I took the time to, you know, sand and clean and hopefully de-rust um, some spots here and there. And I'm glad I took the time to do all new fuel lines, all new fuel pump. The tank's been clean. It's been taped off. Uh, there might be a little dust in there, but it's been taped off for like two years since I've had it. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think it's going to be a quality build for, uh, for being mostly eBay and Facebook Marketplace parts with a little few little things from Summit Racing and, and some individual companies. I think it's going to be a pretty badass little ride. So, um, anyways, I'm rambling. I apologize. I get excited. I get on a roll. I look up and we're at almost 30 minutes. So this is the longest video so far. So everyone have a great night. Um, the plan for tomorrow, uh, I'm going to get the throwout bearing pressed. Hopefully I get some parts in and can do something with that. That would be nice. Um, I'll get that cam angle sensor put back in properly, put the water pump back on, retorque those bolts and um uh replace the hardware on the quick release steering wheel and maybe install some harnesses and uh i need to weld up the transmission mount that's the other thing i got the welding wire so tomorrow i will reconstruct and um replace the transmission mount i made 
and um, you know, hopefully everything lines up. Or I might wait till I get the transmission back in because it's a lot easier to bolt the pieces up together, tack them, take it back down, and then weld it, and then put it back on finally. So I might wait on that. We'll see. But anyways, hopefully we get some parts tomorrow. I need a good parts day. But talk to you guys soon. Have a great night.